Today we have a mega episode. We have chip fab updates, fab equipment companies, we have labor and infrastructure shortages, and possibly the shortest bull market ever. Or is it? Also, we're going to talk about lithium pricing and why we still like Albemarle and on semi. To kick us off, we're going to start with Intel and some news that came out of Germany. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. Yes, Casey, let's start with this news specifically from Germany. So as you all may have known, last year Intel said it was planning a new uh, fabrication complex in Magdeburg, Germany. Originally, this was going to be something like a 17 billion euro investment. But as planning went on, Intel basically said it needed more money from the German government. Originally, they were going to get something in the ballpark of 6.8 billion euros in subsidies from Germany. But uh, Germany said, there's no more money in the budget from us. Build the fab anyways to the best of your ability, Intel. But there's been some ongoing negotiations behind the scenes. As we record this right now on Monday, June 19th, Germany maybe caved a bit. They are, in fact, going to up the subsidy to about 10 billion euros the total factory investment over time is going to be roughly $33 billion into uh, this fab complex in Magdeburg, Germany. Good news if you're if you're betting on this Intel turnaround. Casey, you said it's our favorite punching bag, maybe specifically my favorite punching bag. But honestly, I am not betting against Intel here. This is good for Intel. This is good for the semiconductor industry. Uh, maybe some much needed positive news here for the company. This is according to Reuters. This Intel deal would be the third big investment in four days following a 4.6 billion chip plant in Poland and a $25 billion factory in Israel. One in Poland, again, it's an expansion of some existing facilities Intel already has there. It looks like this is going to be an assembly and test uh, plant that they're going to expand in Poland. CEO Pat Gelsinger basically said Poland was hungrier than everyone else. And so that's why they won that. And then, as you mentioned, the 25 billion in Israel, nothing has been said from Intel. As Again, as we record this anyways, Intel hasn't said this, but it's actually Israel's prime minister, uh, Netanyahu, who said this on Sunday. Uh, it kind of sounds like this is maybe an expansion on the original 10 billion investment, Intel. But this is interesting, though, because... Intel's subsidiary, Mobileye, the automotive processing designer, is based in Israel. And then Intel still pending acquisition of Tower Semiconductor, which is an Israeli chip fab. So interesting here. Maybe Intel uh, making a nice concerted push here to maybe double down on the automotive segment because Tower specific chip fab facilities. One of its specialties is older generation chips as well as analog chips. So maybe this is like a little growing consortium here that Intel is trying to foster. And we've said in the past, we kind of felt like, you know, Intel was ignoring its its star player, Mobileye, but maybe all of these these independent parts, these three pieces are actually all part of the same puzzle as they kind of maybe triple down on what they've got going in Israel, which looks like a, a pretty darn good thing. We saw a news report on some quantum computing chips that Intel is working on. Is the advent of quantum computing and use of ad quantum computing going to be accelerated? I seriously doubt that, but this is an interesting uh, little bit of hardware that Intel has announced. So this chip is called Tunnel Falls. It's a quantum computing qubit chip. So a qubit being the equivalent to a bit, the ones and zeros in classical computing. So classical computing, maybe here we'll embed our 
at this point, very ancient classical video from close to when we started this channel on Moore's Law and uh, how these bits and classical computing work, the ones and the zeros. A qubit can be anything in between a one and a zero, and it basically can accelerate computing. Ultimately, quantum computing, we think still years down the road until widespread commercialization, but when it does get there, it's going to be probably just the next generation of computing acceleration, kind of like NVIDIA's work in the GPU is accelerating classical computing as we know it right now. Intel's Tunnel Falls, basically this is a research chip. It's for quantum computing researchers. This is not going to move the needle anytime soon, but it is interesting though, because maybe Intel, we've talked about this before, oftentimes when you get a turning point for tech companies, it's when a competitor has a misstep or you have a fundamental shift in the technology itself. Maybe quantum computing is that future shift. Maybe we're like five to 10 years down the road when we have that tectonic shift in computing technology. And maybe Intel could be setting it up itself up for the next generation of computing acceleration. We are all in expectation of ARM's IPO sometime this year, but it appears that they are looking for some big name investors. And that includes Intel, Google, Apple, Microsoft, TSMC, Samsung Electronics. They all are in talks to become anchor investors into this company arm holding for its IPO. This could be another really great thing for Intel shareholders because they do have more debt at this point than they do cash, but they do still have a sizable position in cash and short-term investments on their balance sheet. This particular juncture after the Q1 2023 earnings report, Intel did report having $27.5 billion in cash and short-term investments. Again, over $50 billion in total debt, so not exactly what you would consider to be the healthiest of balance sheets. Even when you're talking about asset-heavy chip fabs like TSMC, Samsung, and Intel, nevertheless, ample cash. If they can kind of get in on the ground floor on the IPO, that would be before shares actually hit the public market. They would basically get a placement. They would get some stock allocated to them. And then if the IPO blows up because uh, us retail investors uh, get way too optimistic and run the share price up on, on day one, as you pointed out a couple of weeks, uh, Casey, Intel could have um, a new item to take to the pawn shop later on. As far as I'm concerned, this is all great news for Intel, really. I mean, it seems like they're getting their stuff together and maybe they won't have to visit the pawn shop. Or, or maybe ask for such uh, steep handouts from governments like Germany. We won't go there though. Uh, let's continue with our chip fab news roundup here. Currently, there was an, most recently an ex Samsung executive, also a former SK Hynix executive, Samsung and SK Hynix being the world's two largest memory chip makers based in South Korea. This ex-executive was arrested for stealing tech and trying to set up a copycat fab in mainland China with stolen Samsung technology about a mile or so from an existing Samsung fab in mainland China. Interesting things going on here in the chip fab world. We'll get to our overall thoughts on this in a moment. I think everyone has seen either a photo or a news article or a video of Bill Gates visiting President Xi in China. Don't know what that's about, but it has to do apparently with AI. And we put this in the video because saying AI in every video is important. Yes, it is. Uh, we got to feed the algorithm. Okay. Enough of that. We have no idea what that's about, but uh, let's talk about Micron in China. This has all sorts of political intrigue around it. So Micron's disaster in China. This is a bit of a tit for tat uh, response, sounds like. But a number of weeks ago, China decided to ban Micron's memory chips for some of its commercial applications. Micron said late in May that up to half of their Chinese revenue from China would get impacted, which would represent 
perhaps a low teens or even upwards of a high teens percentage of their total overall revenue. I'm sure Micron will provide us with some updates on that come their next quarterly earnings update on June 28th. Interesting here, after Micron said up to half of their revenue from China would get impacted, Micron proceeds to say here more recently, they are going to be investing $600 million in their Chinese chip packaging facilities in the coming years. What the heck is going on here? According to the report that Nick is referencing here, the Cybersecurity Administration of China said that in May, Micron failed its security review and barred operators of key domestic infrastructure from purchasing these memory products. So it seems kind of confusing that Micron would be now reinvesting more money into China. It ultimately goes to show that Micron really needs to be able to sell these mid-range memory chips in a market like China, as well as having access to these manufacturing facilities in China. Yeah, it's, it's a, an, a very affordable place to operate a chip packaging facility. So <sighs> political intrigue or not, Micron still investing in mainland China. And apparently also India now. So Micron apparently nearing a deal and a possible official announcement here that they will be investing, according to reports, at least $1 billion, if not closer to $2 billion in a new packaging facility there. So congrats, India. Uh, you're going to get a much larger presence in the global semiconductor supply chain. Just for reference here, though, Micron had announced uh, late last year in 2022 that they would be investing some $100 billion over the next 20-year span in the U.S. So this little initial investment in, in, in India is very small in the grand scheme of things. But nevertheless, I think further illustrates this chip manufacturing arms race that is heating up in Markets around the world traditionally that have had very little, if anything, to do with semiconductor manufacturing. Okay, to wrap up this segment, we just have one more chip news item here. Nick, what is it? Yes. So Global Foundries, that is the former manufacturing arm of AMD, now its own independent publicly traded company. Uh, Global Foundries has been striking these long-term supply agreements with various companies Earlier this year, they struck a long-term chip supply agreement with General Motors, GM. And in the last week, they have now done so with the very large defense contractor, Lockheed Martin. So this is another interesting one because I think for a number of reasons here. First, you know, this helps a company like Lockheed Martin secure domestic, U.S. domestic supply of chips for what are considered mission critical or uh, national security sensitive applications. But a little bit more than that, this is also interesting because part of this announcement, Global Foundries and Lockheed Martin said that they were also going to collaborate on building a chiplet ecosystem. So we'll talk about this a little bit more in the segment when we talk about some specific chip fab manufacturing equipment companies. But chiplets are one part of the next iteration of semiconductor technology going forward, basically where you start to break up monolithic dyes like you have presently today and have had for decades, where you have a lot of integrated aspects of, of a chip called an integrated circuit, you start to disaggregate those and package them together as a separate chip, but on the, on the same circuit board. So these little chiplets, they're more dense. You start delving into 3D architectures, um, higher speed interconnects between these things. And it allows for a company like, let's say, Lockheed Martin, to maybe pick and choose who is going to design these chiplets. So presently, right now, maybe they like only use an AMD design, but later on they might be might be able to use these chiplet architectures where maybe they pick and choose uh, different designs from disparate sources. So building out this chiplet architecture where you bring in multiple vendors to supply 
an ultimate design uh, and an end application. Interesting. It's interesting to see this take place here. A number of companies have been talking about this, developing their own chiplet architecture. We know TSMC is working on this over in Taiwan. Uh, Samsung working on this in South Korea. Global Foundries, it sounds like, entering this fray as well. Intel, you name it. Companies around the chip fab world trying to prepare for this chiplet architecture future.